Well, good afternoon and happy new year to you today. I'm joined by uh, Assistant Commissioner Parrott. Every life lost on our roads is a complete tragedy. It's a complete tragedy uh, and it's also preventable and it's also avoidable. We know that last year we lost 95 lives on our roads and this compared to 114 lives the year before. So we are seeing a reduction in lives lost on the roads. However, there is absolutely uh, no cause for complacency. We know that at this time of year especially, South Australians love to get out and about in our regional areas. And we know uh, that around this time of year, over the festive season, that a number of lives in the past have been lost on our roads. If you are taking those country roads back home, please make sure that you do the right thing on our roads. Uh, we know that selfish, idiotic behaviour on our roads has the capacity to kill people. Let's make sure that we start uh, 2021 in a positive fashion. Let's make sure that we all do the right thing on our roads this new year, this festive season. Let's make sure uh, that, we, that we prevent lives lost on our roads wherever we can. As I said, the uh, lives lost on our roads has reduced from 2019 to 2020, but already we saw one life tragically taken uh, on the 1st of January this year. Every life lost on our roads is preventable. Every life lost on our roads is avoidable, but it's incumbent upon us to do the right thing. So make sure uh, when you are out there and you are driving this festive season, please make sure uh, that you do the right thing and take uh, relevant breaks. Make sure that you uh, are not distracted uh, when you're on our roads. You know, even, even if you take your eye off the wheel for a split second, it can have absolutely devastating fatal consequences. We know, for example, in recent uh, our recent data shows that three out of five fatality crashes have involved distraction. We also know uh, that for many of these crashes, these fatal crashes, uh, they actually occur within 20 kilometres radius of, of a person's home. And still, around 70% of these crashes, fatality crashes, uh, are in our regional areas. So if you are taking those country roads back home this festive season, please make sure that you're mindful, that you're cautious, that you do the right thing, and that when you are driving, just drive. Just drive. Uh, you don't need to check on the kids in the back seat. You don't have to check your phone. Let's make sure that we make good choices when we're driving this summer. Good choices on the roads. Because bad choices, and we all have a choice, but bad choices when you're driving behind the wheel can kill people, can kill yourself, can kill your loved ones. Let's make sure that we avoid uh, all of this unnecessary tragedy this year. I'll now hand over to Assistant Commissioner. Thank you, Minister. As we look back at 2020, I'd just like everyone to stop and pause for a minute and consider this. When was the last time you left home on your car, your motorbike, your bicycle or on foot? heading to a particular destination and made it safely. During that trip, did you use your phone? Did you speed even just a little bit? For longer journeys, did you plan ahead or did you take risks along the way because you hadn't made those plans before you left? Did you wear a seatbelt? Because last year, 95 people did not reach their destination. 95 people died on our roads. That's 95 lives lost, 95 families affected, 95 groups of friends and other loved ones impacted by the loss of life on our roads. In addition to that, a further 695 people didn't make it to their destination. That's because they were involved in a serious injury crash, resulting in them being hospitalised, often with long-term injuries, that will last a lifetime. It's often the unseen trauma and the unseen impact of road safety. This year, I want everyone to make a commitment to themselves, to their families, to their friends, to change their driving behaviour. Don't use your mobile phone. Don't speed, even just a little bit. Please wear your seatbelt and do not drink or drug drive. Everyone has a responsibility to look after themselves, 
the other people they have in the car with them, particularly those that can't do anything about your behaviour whilst you're driving, such as children. And everybody has a responsibility to look after everybody else's safety on the road. Disappointingly, about a quarter of the lives lost on our road were for people who were in essence doing the right thing. Those people, those lives, those families were impacted by the selfish choices of other drivers on our road who caused or had a significant contribution to the loss of those lives. This behaviour is not acceptable. As we move forward into 2021, we all need to be responsible, we all need to think road safety, and we all need to be prepared to do the right thing on our roads. This is the only way that the community can support each other in terms of bringing the number of lives lost and serious injuries down on South Australian roads. For Sapol's part, we'll continue to enforce the law and hold people accountable for their actions. Uh, we'll also continue our large road safety education focus to make sure that people understand their responsibilities and the impact that their driving has on others in our community. So this year, please make a commitment to your parents, make a commitment to your kids, make a commitment to your friends that you will do the right thing on our roads so that you can ensure your own safety and the safety of others that you ride with or that you live with and that you drive with. The last thing we want to see uh, is a repeat of the numbers of this year and in years gone by. As the Minister said, a large proportion of the deaths on our roads have been in regional areas. And one of the prevailing thoughts amongst regional people in particular is that city people are dying on regional roads. There were 27 lives lost on regional roads by people living in the region within 20 kilometres of where they live. Similarly in the city, Many people are dying on our roads within 20 kilometres of their home. So please, again, don't become complacent just because you know the roads and where you live. Um, maintain a focus on just driving. Um, and hopefully we'll see some better results uh, next year. And Assistant Commissioner, you've had a lot of police resources diverted to other duties, COVID duties, obviously. How's that impacted on um, officers being able to target road safety? Uh, so the COVID commitment has impacted uh, on a range of policing roles uh, and it has had an impact in relation to road safety. Uh, we did need to suspend our block testing for um, random breath testing earlier in the year. Uh, that was a conscious decision made to balance out the risk of COVID and the safety of the members of the public in relation to COVID. But we do maintain uh, mobile random breath testing right throughout that period. Um, our commitment is to ensure that we uh, continue to do both mobile um, breath testing, drug testing, and also with the block testing, which has been reinstated for quite many months now. Um, I should remind people that every police, officer, uh, police car uh, is a mobile uh, random breath testing um, opportunity. So if you think you're going to escape because you can avoid a, a block test or a static test, you need to think again. It has also been a large focus of all of our police, um, both on the highways and also in the metropolitan area, to continue to uh, enforce uh, the road safety message as well. So the number of uh, people who've been either arrested, reported uh, or expiated in terms of uh, their behaviour um, uh, continues to be a focus for us and is something that uh, is measured uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, essentially. Um, what about, um, would you like to see more police resources go into the road toll, even though we don't have um, MAC anymore. Um, what would you like to see happen going forward in terms of um, police resources and on the roads? Yeah, so um, we have a significant number of police. In fact, uh, like I said before, every police car is essentially focused on road safety. Um, so there is already an existing very large presence. Um, we also have um, our marketing and road safety unit uh, within SAPOL, which has taken up a large uh, number of the functions of MAC as well. Um, we've seen some recent introduction of uh, new uh, marketing campaigns around road safety this year. So we are continuing that focus. We are continuing both the education message uh, and also the enforcement um, on our roads as well. 
One of the, um, I guess, uh, disappointing but um, in some ways interesting thing that occurred this year is that as there became less traffic on the road, particularly early in COVID, we saw some absolutely idiotic behaviour on our roads. Um, we had ex exceeding, uh, sorry, we had people exceeding the speed limit by ridiculous amounts. We had, we had people um, high range street driving. Um, now maybe that's a consequence of people thinking that we're not out there, but clearly because we're catching people, um, we were. We are, and we will continue to be. Was that a bit of complacency setting in because they thought, well, there's not as many cars on the road, I can you know, do what I like? Yeah, it's really hard to understand why uh, people were behaving in that in that uh, way. Um, yes, there are less cars on the road, so maybe people think it's you know safer to to drive. We know that um, every five kilometres over the speed limit increases or doubles your chance of being involved in a serious injury or fatal crash. Uh, and drink driving, I think, speaks for itself. Um, you know. Sometimes people could be um, not forgiven, but you can understand if they make a mistake in terms of uh, low range strength driving. But we're talking about people who here who are making a conscious decision um, to basically get plastered and then hop in a car and think that they can operate, uh, you know, like a one ton bullet with uh, with the, all the efficiency and skill that's required to do that. So, you know, the message clearly is: if you're going to engage in these behaviours, uh, then you will be caught. Um, and, and Maybe that's the best outcome for you, because if you don't get caught, um, maybe you'll end up in hospital with a lifelong injury, uh, or maybe uh, you won't make a home at all. We've already had one fatality, only seven hours into the new year. That's quite uh, Yeah, look, it's uh, um, really disappointing. Um, it's probably a little ironic as well, um, in terms of people don't think that uh, you know, road safety impacts on them. Uh, the person who died on New Year's Day is a mate of mine, uh, who I ride with regularly. So it just goes to show, um, you know, you can never really understand uh, when road safety is actually going to impact on you as an individual. Um, we all think it's not going to happen to us. We all think it's not going to impact on us. Uh, but I can tell you from first-hand experience, uh, it does. And there's, like I said, 95 people this year, 114 last year, 695 serious injuries this year. It has a massive impact on people, so please, just do the right thing on the roads. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk about families, we talk about friends, but then you talk about the emergency services workers. Um, in regional areas, there's often a lot of volunteers within our emergency services, so the SES and the CFS. So, you know, it's um, those people who are rolling out to fatal crashes where people have lost their lives, it's those people who are potentially, you know, attempting to save lives by doing CPR or you know, rendering assistance and oftentimes you know people are going out time and time again you know and uh, experiencing these uh, these fatalities and these, this trauma you know, on a regular basis so there's an impact on the emergency services but clearly uh, the impact is on families um, it's on groups of friends associated with families and uh, more broadly on the community but uh, yeah every tragedy uh, is one too many i know you've had a lot the road toll which is a good thing is there anything you can do Going forward to, to something different, do you think that is going to hit home? Uh, look, everything's on the table as far as we're concerned in terms of uh, what we can do to continue to lower the number of lives lost in our road and also the serious injuries. Um, legislation is something that we're constantly looking at, um, particularly uh, in terms of excessive speed. Um, you know, we're interested in understanding what options are available to us uh, in terms of loss of licence or you know, vehicles being forfeited, which we already have legislation in place for. But certainly, uh, if there are opportunities to tighten up those types of things. Uh, we've seen this year um, 19 motorcycle riders and two pitting passengers uh, lose their lives on our road. Uh, we already have a, a graduated licensing scheme legislation uh, in the process of going through at the moment, uh, which raises the age that people can obtain a motorcycle licence and provides different term um, uh, conditions around that, so there are already things in ongoing work we're doing, particularly in the legislation space. Um, but it's not just about police, uh, it is about everybody um, doing the right thing, um, being conscious and consciously thinking about what we're doing on the roads, um, and consciously making a decision to change some of your behaviour. So, you know, if you use your mobile phone while driving, or make a commitment to your family this year that you're not going to use your mobile phone while you're driving, it's not that hard, seriously. Um, same thing with speeding, same thing with seatbelts. And particularly, as the Minister said before, this time of year, 
Uh, people are travelling from holiday destinations more so than ever. Uh, there will be more traffic on our roads this year, so please plan your trip ahead. Allow, you, allow yourself some wriggle room so that you don't have to rush and you don't have to take risks that you wouldn't ordinarily take so that you and your family can make it home safely. Senator, of course, death by dangerous driving cases go through the courts recently. Would you like to see tougher penalties um, for people who, uh, who could be who are on the roads? Yeah, look, um, the issue of penalties uh, from the courts is a uh, very emotive one and a very topical one at the moment. Um, there is different levels of legislation in place to adequately address and charge people with an appropriate offence um, or when they are responsible for the loss of life or serious injuries on our road. Uh, the penalties themselves uh, are a matter for the court. Uh, every case is different uh, and so you know, the facts need to be taken into account and, and ultimately it is up to the court. Yeah, Christmas. Christmas, the minister. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Minister, we've seen that um, Serco has been fined one hundred thousand dollars for that um, escape at the Ark. When are we expecting um, the report to come? Sure. Um, so it's a very good question. Look, let me be very clear. Any uh, escape from any uh, prison is completely unacceptable. We made that very clear. Uh, and obviously in a matter of hours, remedial works were undertaken. And as you pointed out, there are a number of reviews that are being undertaken. Uh, and I expect to say more about that uh, in January, uh, within a couple of weeks. Do you expect a report by the end of the month? Uh, so I expect to say more on that uh, in January. Uh, let's be very clear, under Labor's record, in 16 years of Labor government, we saw 60 escapes in 16 years. and I'm pretty sure that uh, not, not one of those reports saw the light of day. But look, we'll, we'll consider uh, all of the, the facts at hand. As I said, uh, Serco have been fined $100,000 uh, and I am actually getting an updated briefing this week, so I'll have more to say about that in the coming weeks. Uh, Minister, obviously the Motor Accident Commission did an excellent job in terms of advocating for road safety. Uh, are you con uh, convinced or uh, satisfied that Safe Island Dipti are able to do as good a job in terms of educating the public and reducing the road top? So we saw 95 lives lost on our road last year uh, and in years where the MAC uh, was in charge of this area we saw more lives lost in those years in some years. So I think that speaks volumes uh, to the work uh, that did and also SAPOL are doing. But of course we want to see lives lost on our roads reducing. Uh, every life lost on our roads is one life too many. Uh, it's still not a, a cause to be complacent, however, we've got to keep doing the hard yards. And look, the facts are these. Uh, SAPOL did, uh, we, they're all doing a great job in terms of media campaigns, marketing campaigns. Uh, we see them on the, on the TV and uh, out in country locations, for example. But the fact is this, people have got to take ownership uh, of their own actions. People have got to take responsibility of their own actions. Uh, when, when you get behind the wheel of a car, uh, people have got to make good choices. They make good choices if they choose not to be on their mobile phone and not to drink drive, to make sure that they wear their seatbelt, uh, then you know, things like this, I'm sure that we'll see these results head in a, in a better direction. But at the end of the day, uh, you can have all the marketing campaigns in the world and they're very important, uh, but ultimately it's up to drivers to do the right thing behind the wheel. Would you consider re-establishing a body like Mac to advocate for road safety? The road well, as I said, I think we've got a number uh, of, of agencies of bodies that do a fantastic job at the moment uh, in terms of our road safety messaging. And as I said, 95 lives lost on our roads last year. There's always more to be done. Um, but that number is actually reduced on some of the years where, where Mac uh, was in charge. So would you look at re-establishing a body like that? Well, as I said, I think at the moment, uh, our agencies and, and the relevant body, bodies that exist are doing a good job. Always more to be done. Uh, but uh, as I said, ultimately it's up to people to also take responsibility of their own actions. But in terms of uh, advertising, in terms of campaigns, I think there's some exceptional campaigns being uh, being conducted at the moment. Okay. Thanks, Thanks. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.